Let us enter into this time of worship and celebration. In the safety of this sacred place, we are invited into a time of gratitude, reflection, renewal, and hope. Come in, bringing all of who you are. Calm your hurried pace. For this hour, let the cares, the fretfulness, and worry be set aside. Know that you are not alone. There is strength and caring support for you here. Let us quietly reflect on these words. Good morning, everyone. And I invite everyone to please take their seat. Let me welcome all who have gathered to participate in this time of worship and celebration of life, which will be followed, uh, of course, by our annual congregational meeting. Thank you to all the Zoom people who will be taking part in worship and also uh, in our meeting. A couple of announcements, just two or three announcements that I have this morning. A reminder about the turkey pies are still available. And um, I have started something that uh, I planned to do before the pandemic started, and that was to draft a hopefully thoughtful um, journal, if you like, of three or four pages, uh, which I will email to people. And it's from a progressive Christian point of view, and um, you are invited to read it. If you don't want to receive it, uh, let me know, and I'll take you off the mailing list. It does go out to people beyond Westminster. Its title is Forward Fate Thing, and the topic of discussion in this one will be the recent uh, so-called Freedom Convoy. And uh, there'll be an opportunity later, I hope, if you're interested, uh, to have a Zoom discussion around some of those issues. Jeannie has some announcements for us. Um, the first announcement I'm making on behalf of Heather Washensky and her family. Um, Heather is the one who makes all our delicious cakes and pastries for our uh, events. Her husband, Bill, has been uh, not in good health for the last little while. He's been in the hospital for the last uh, week or so. He's had 11 blood transfusions. They have prepared him for dialysis, but um, he hasn't started it yet. And so Heather would like to uh, put out a plea for anyone who is able to give blood, who does give blood, who knows anyone who gives blood, to give it in Bill's name. Um, and the family would really appreciate that. And I would ask that you all keep Heather and Bill and their family in your prayers and thoughts. And the second announcement is we have a birthday this week. On Tuesday, Dell is celebrating his birthday. Yeah, I was thinking of that, yes. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> Are there any further announcements? I invite you now to please, with, please join with me in our entry into worship and celebration. It is a responsive one printed in this morning's bulletin. On this day of our annual congregational meeting, we gather as a faithful of God. We come to listen to what God has to say to us. God has invited us to this place. May our faces reflect our hopes and hearts. We gather as the faithful of God, people of the new covenant of hope and promise. We boldly enter into the presence of God, hoping to be transformed into a new people. We gather as the faithful of God, our fears melting away into the heart of God. We come to share in the freedom of the Spirit. We come to praise God's holy name. Let us come together in prayer. God of the open road, God of the twisting path, 
God of the narrow and upward way, on this day of our annual congregational meeting, the people of this congregation have gathered in person and virtually. In this time of worship and celebration, give us provision for the journey, courage and faith, compassion and endurance to face the challenges of today and tomorrow. Open our eyes to see you walking beside us, protecting us, encouraging us, loving us. We pray this in the name of Jesus who calls us and moves us. Amen. As you know, from time to time, I uh, choose in the conversation area of the uh, area of the worship service to talk about hymns and the story behind the hymns. This morning, I'm going to focus a little less on the hymns themselves and rather on the hymn writer. Her name is Sylvia Dunstan. And I find this a difficult thing even now to talk about Sylvia. She was one of my fellow students at Emmanuel College in Toronto when she was studying towards ministry. She was ordained the same year as I was. As students, of course, in a small college, you get to know each other very, very well. Sylvia had a wonderful sense of humor. She was a beautiful soul. She was loving and warm and caring and compassionate. And she was also a major hymn writer. And before getting into discussing the hymns we'll be singing of hers this morning, I'll just tell you a little bit of, about her bio, biography. Sylvia was born in 1955. She was raised by her grandparents, and she attributes her love of music to those who encourage her, encourage her to develop that gift. She began writing uh, her songs, her hymns, in the early 70s, and soon after that she met Sister Miriam Therese Winter, who encouraged her to use her talents within the church and within the spiritual community. Sylvia had written some songs, and she told us about them and sang a few for us at Emmanuel College, but she would then apologize and said, that's why I've given up writing the music and only now do lyrics. Her bachelor's degree came from York University. She was ordained in 1980, same year as I was, at Emmanuel Col or by Hamilton Conference in the United Church. She went on to achieve uh, some special honors uh, for her hymn writing. She, in 1990, her hymns were uh, the topic of discussion and concentration at the Hymn Society of Canada and the United States. A number of hymn books were published uh, with strictly her hymns in them, two at least, and a number of her hymns have been published in Voices United. I mentioned Sylvia was ordained in 1980. She was a fellow student. And of course, ministers stay in touch with each other. We learned in the, early, in the late 80s and early 90s that Sylvia um, had contracted cancer. And she died on July 25th, 1993. And, as a fellow student, one of her fellow students, and all the rest of us who gathered, those who gathered for her funeral, we all felt, having known Sylvia so well, and who she was and what she stood for, that her death was a serious loss to the United Church of Canada, and also a personal loss to many of us who knew her. Many of Sylvia's hymns focused on the mission and Ministry of the Church. I invite you now to please join with me and we will recite together the, a new creed of the United Church of Canada. It has been printed in your bulletin. Please join with me. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, 
who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us take a few moments just to quietly reflect on the words of this new creed. May a heart of peace rest with you. Amen. Thank you very much, Joanna. Time has come for us to make our offerings to God through the church. I would invite you, if you haven't already done so, to leave your offerings in the offerings plate in the back of the sanctuary. Let us pray. O oh God, spirit of life and generosity, how good it is when we share our gifts of money and material things to further the way of love, hope, and justice in this community and around the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Reading first from the New Testament, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that, I, that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I'm reading also from Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 49, Jesus said, Why do you call me Master, Master, and do not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and pays attention to my words and acts on them, I'll show you what a such person is like. That one is like a person building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on bedrock. When a flood came, the torrent slammed against that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who listens to my words and doesn't act on them is like a person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the torrent slammed against it, it collapsed immediately, and so the ruin of that house was total. And reading also from the United Church of Song of Faith from 2006. We sing of a church seeking to continue the story of Jesus by embodying Christ's presence in the world. We are called together by Christ as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, striving to be faithful servants of God in our time and place. The church has not always lived up to its vision. It requires the spirit to orient it helping it to live an emerging faith while honoring tradition, challenging it to live by grace rather than entitlement, for we are called to be a blessing to the earth. We sing of God's good news lived out, a church with purpose, faith nurtured and hearts comforted, gifts shared for the good of all, resistance to the forces that exploit and marginalize, fierce love in the face of violence, human dignity defended, members of a community held and inspired by God, corrected and comforted, instrument of the loving spirit of Christ, creations mending. 
Let us join together in the choral response, Voices United 579, The Churches Wherever God's People. Let us pray. God, a spirit of life, as we face the future as a community of your people in this place, may we know afresh your faithful love and see afresh your loving faithfulness. May it be these, may it be you, for whom we yearn in every season. May it be your words of life for which we listen and in which alone we live. With respect for our congregation's past, and with hearts of flesh, help us with courage and wisdom and freedom to welcome and to pursue and participate in new things that you are doing in and around, and dis in around us and despite us and beyond us. Continue to raise up leaders who will serve your people with humility and with deep humanity bear witness to your good news. May we dare to dream and to risk what we have never imagined, free, compassionate, unencumbered, joyous, and just. And along the way, save us from empty slogans, from senseless controversies, and from the delusion that we alone are at the center of your work here. For all that has been, we give thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. Let us now pray our silent prayers. I invite you now to please join with me as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me thank everyone who has taken time to participate in this morning's service of worship and celebration. There are many of you. I would like to thank Wilma for reading and Joanna for uh, her gifts of music and Michael for his too. And Norm for all his work on the sound system. And just so many people, I can't name them all today, but thank you very much. The time has come for us to leave the service of worship and attend our annual congregational meeting. May God go before us to show us the way. May God shine above us to lighten our world. May God lie beneath us to bear us up. May God go beside us to companion our journeys. May the grace of God, wisdom, word, and spirit rest and abide within your heart on this holy day. This is Reverend Dell Stewart. I hope you enjoyed this audio presentation of today's time of worship and celebration. If you did, please click the like button. You can also click on subscribe to make it easier to find our channel and click the bell to receive a notification each time a podcast becomes available. Peace and joy now from Westminster United Church in Windsor, Ontario.